30 to 40 percent of all of our amphibians we're going to see in decline or extinction within the next 50 to 100 years. And that's where AZA and North American zoos um, have put efforts into facilities like this to help the situation. I mean, if we release, you know, thousands of toads from the, from the Denver Zoo, that's a really good goal. Boreal toads are, uh, they're a high-altitude high amphibian, um, so they're the Colorado's only high altitude toad, so they live from eight to 12,000 feet. Why we think they're so important is because they're really an indicator species for what's happening in ecosystems and wetlands. And amphibians, and particularly boreal toads, are a really great indicator, because amphibians, they basically breathe through their skin, and so they're just a sponge. So whatever is going on in the water enters the body of the animal, and so if there's something that's going on, something that's not healthy with the ecosystem, Amphibians are the first ones we'll see it. So we're seeing boreal toads, which used to be really abundant and widespread, so there were reports of them hanging out under streetlights in Buena Vista. And now there are, there are biologists with CPW who say there are maybe only 800 adult toads left. So this is, that's our goal, is to provide that assurance population where we're breeding animals, releasing them into the wild, and it's really acting as a supplemental part of the population. This is a refrigerator. You can see it at 37 degrees right now. We put these guys down in October and gradually brought them down in temperature to get basically to that uh, degree. And then over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be slowly raising them up in temperature to put them out into the, uh, the other containment systems you see over here. And they just sit in here and wait in the, what is called a hibernaculum where they don't freeze, but they're able to keep a constant cold temperature. And when you look on here, these are localities of all the places in Colorado where they came from. Since we got this, we have had all these custom terrariums that are built that you can see behind me. It was a challenge. One of our aquarists, Kent Weiser Flew, um, he's awesome at building these systems and has been for years. So we, we got together and talked about how we could make it work. Nine, nine house, uh, different localities from Colorado, and we have one, uh, one locality from Utah. So basically, we are going through our Utah population of toads and administering uh, fertility hormones to try to induce breeding. Uh, we just pulled these frogs out of their hibernaculum after almost seven months in in their hibernaculum at 36 to 38 degrees and now we're waking them up and giving them fertility treatments essentially you can certainly see those highlighted markings there clearly identifiable Little dot in the middle with four surrounding dots. These eggs, um, because they reproduce so high in the high country, their their growing season is very short, so they develop pretty rapidly. If the eggs are viable, uh, you'll see them have a, a medial cleavage in the in the egg at first as they're developing, and then they develop into this tiny kidney bean shape instead of being perfectly round as they develop. If they start changing shape and, and developing, it happens within a few days of being made. Now the next week is just monitoring, checking how many we actually have. Um, once they've all hatched out successfully, we're going to take on the tadpoles, of course, are fully aquatic when they live in the water. So what we're going to do is take the, uh, take the land portion out with the adults, move the adults into a separate holding facility and then have the just the tadpoles be in the what will now be all aquatic um, where they can successfully um, hopefully successfully uh, grow into late stage tadpoles uh, and then we'll probably release them right before they metamorphose. Well tomorrow's gonna be a long day we um, animal staff is gonna get here probably between 4 or 5 a.m. tomorrow, uh, individually count each tadpole, bag them up. We're treating them pretty much like fish, where we put them in a fish bag with the water from their aquaria, um, inject a bunch of straight oxygen into the bag, and then uh, put them in a bucket to transport them. And then it's about a four, 
a little bit more four hour commute to Pitkin, uh, and then the site is about another 45 hour from Pitkin, Colorado. And then from there, it's about a half mile hike in to the wetland. So tomorrow we're gonna have approximately 500. Yeah, from two different localities. So not as many as we had hoped to produce this year, but it's a good start. We learned quite a bit and hopefully in the upcoming years we'll be able to produce you know, many, many more. So we, lear we learned a lot about the process and hopefully we'll be able to incorporate that and produce a lot more next season.